In 1982, Glenn Gould released a second recording of the Goldberg Variations by Johann Sebastian Bach. Several things happened between this recording and the first one in 1955. In these 27 years, he had stopped performing for live audiences in preference for the recording studio. And during this time, recording technology matured to become more precise and sound reproduction became truer and closer to the intentions of the musician. I wanted to listen to both versions and to study the differences. And so I began this project in 1986. And naturally, being a dancer, I listen with my whole body rather than just with my ears and let my foot tap out the music. Bach is reputed to have been a brilliant improviser, but he's left us only his musical writings. Even in these scores, however, there's room for interpretation, for adaptation, for change. In retiring to his studio, Glenn Gould removed us even further from um, uh, the living source of music, the movement of the body and the mind. Instead, these unchanging recordings are the equivalent of sound sculptures or sonic paintings or acoustical architecture. It was music as an art caught on the wing that was recorded in 1955, and by 1982, Gould could compose his version uh, like a tile mosaic. But both of these versions are embedded in a um, computer disc now and uh, fixed, really, as music has never been before. And as I dance, I'm fascinated with this new reality. And I try to dance every performance differently with new spacing and uh, new directions and new relationships to the notes. I want to exam examine the possible connections these two masters have left for us to hear and reflect as well that every time we listen, we are different. However we, at the end of the 20th century, can fix the moment of performance, we don't experience this fixity twice the same. We, the listeners, are alive as the music is not. And so the equation between the performance of music and the experience of it brings us back to the changes of our mind and to improvisation. The more I listened, the more I heard. And beyond the brilliance of composition and performance, the reassuring baritone of Glenn Gould can be heard. It's the vocal equivalent of foot tapping. It's an aspect of his mind apart from his fingers. It croons to them. Uh, other music that Bach might have included or reinforces the melodic lines around which they have danced. In performing these recordings, his voice has been a companion in my thoughts on musical fixity in these days. It too is fixed, but its traces survive despite the recording technology, not because of it. Gould said that he played better when he sang, and he played so amazingly that the voice, although subdued, uh, remains to remind us that this music was once pumped by blood. And I assume that Bach might have hummed when his fingers were busy with his music. I've used the 1982 recording for variations 1 through 15, and variations 16 through 30 are the 1955 recording. In this videotape, my improvising becomes fixed. It is now composed, like some of the musical forms, from many improvisations recorded at Felix Meritus in Amsterdam, with a very helpful technical crew and director whom I would like to greet again and thank. <laughs>